Seven Mile Beach on a quite blustery Friday evening. Temperature's about 16 degrees, I think, maybe a bit cooler. All the fishermen are out <laughs> Friday night, uh, and I've come seeking a bit of sunset colour. That's a nice bit of cloud, which I will show you shortly. So should be some nice colour. But the thing with evenings like this is, and one of the things I wanted to talk about in this little video, was that I don't always have a very specific purpose in mind when I go out, like I'm gonna photograph this peak or that peak. Quite often for me, the main purpose of my going out, the, the theme, if you like, of my photography is mood. Well, that's looking pretty nice, isn't it? I may pause before I get to my destination, the other side of this riverbank. Get the old camera out, because that's looking pretty damn nice. All righty. What are we going to do here? Bracketed shot, I think. Always like to get that first shot in the bag. I actually quite like it with an expanse of um, sand at the front here. Often photography is about what you leave out. In fact, most of the time it's about what you leave out rather than what you put in. There's an amazing line of cloud above Mount Coolangatta. This is a lovely, it's a lovely image. Wasn't expecting that so early in the day. Wow, this is gonna look stunning. All that cloud in front of this trail here in the sky is gonna get lit up. Oh yes. All right, let's get moving. Now, believe it or not, this is the mouth of the river here. Uh, the place is called Shoalhaven Heads because it had shoals here. These are the shoals. Uh, and it means that the river mouth is not reliably open. In fact, here it's open very rarely, only when uh, the river's in flood. And it's actually been open for the longest I've ever known. It was open for a couple of years. Yeah, so recently the river started filling back in as it is prone to, and it joined it up with Comorong Island, which is just here, which I'm walking towards. So you can, of course, get to Comorong Island here by road, but it's a fairly decent journey, about 50, 50 or 60 kilometers in all. And you even have to go over a little ferry. <laughs> so it's a bit of a mission, much nicer to be able to just walk across the river mouth from Shoalhaven Heads. Okay, we're nearly at the, the other side and we've got plenty of strong candidates for foreground interest, should I choose to use them. But this is why I came here, because there's this beautiful angle on the mountain and you get this nice side on view that you do not get back that way. So when I say I shoot for mood, I still have a mission in mind, of course, so some sort of loose construct around uh, whatever it is I'm choosing to go out and photograph. In this case, the, the estuary of the Shoalhaven River. But above and beyond that, I just look for stuff that uh, kind of evokes something. Don't want to disappear too far up my own arse talking about this. But for me, it is just all about evoking some kind of mood in the person that's viewing the photo. All this wood you can see here, got washed down river and fetched up here or got 
taken further out to sea. Well, that's an interesting bit of wood, isn't it? I wonder if I can get that in the front of a shot. Get down real low here, this beautiful bit of wood. Oh, that's going to be a nice photo, I think. Just F8 bracketed. I shoot everything bracketed if I can. I love the super wide angle lenses because you can get up so close. Really put them in the frame. Not much cloud on the reverse sunset, but there's these beautiful high level wispy clouds over Mount Coolangatta. Bloody gorgeous. We've officially crossed over now to Comorong Island. That's where it starts just here. Stretches all the way around that away where there's a break wall and uh, the Crookhaven River. Let's go hunting for shots. Oh, there's a beautiful bleached white shell there. But I like all this washed up, bleached, worn wood here. Gorgeous. I shoot handheld for as long as I can because the X-T4 has absolutely sensational in-camera stabilization and in-lens stabilization in the case of this XF10 to 24 mm lens. So I don't worry about shake, a stop down at f8 to sort of f5 and that sort of thing to increase the, um, sorry, decrease the exposure time. But I don't worry about it too much until it gets very dark and then we get the old tripod out. Oh, that cloud's gone, that really nice kind of arc of cloud, but we've still got the nice wispy ones over Coolangatta. Over this side of the, uh, of the river, I can get the bend of the estuary from this side, which really kind of frames the shot. I will stick the photo on screen to show you what I'm talking about. But it just kind of encapsulates it. It's like a, it encircles the mountain almost. If you shoot standing on the water, then you've got a lot of negative space there. So I like to try and frame things if I can. So in about eight minutes, we'll hit peak color. Typically, 10 minutes after the sunsets happen, that's when you get the best of the color, particularly when you get these high level clouds. There is a little bit of pink in these clouds over the ocean, and that color will bleed round. And these ones here, will turn pink too eventually. Yeah, this mountain is called Mount Coolangatta and it gave its name to um, a much more famous Coolangatta up the coast in Queensland. And the only reason that place up in Queensland is called Coolangatta is that there used to be a boat that sailed from here with cedar wood to help build the, uh, the new towns up in uh, the warmer parts of this country. And it shipwrecked uh, up there. And they named the place Coolangatta after the ship. So there you go. But this here, that's the original Coolangatta. Okay, we're about sort of six or seven minutes past sunset now and the color has fizzed a bit. Hopefully it will come back. It should do. We've got these colors here, and as I say, they bleed round. That's normally the way it works. And they should bleed round into those clouds over the mountain. And hopefully we'll get some nice sort of pinks and purples and that kind of stuff. Alrighty then, there are the pinks. Let's get photographing. Got these lovely little flowers here. Little pink flowers. I'm going to line up for some foreground interest. I might try and focus stack these actually. 
So I took through two sets of three bracketed shots there. Now, oh, look at that. Bloody stunning. Holy shit. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm gonna do a quick bracketed manual vertical pano. Around we go. Plenty of overlap. And I'll do an HDR pano merge on those. Might do one at 24 mil as well, actually. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three lots of nine. Oh, I said those colors would bleed round, didn't I? Hey! Oh, this is stunning. Oh, I love it. Don't know if you guys can still see me or not. <laughs> I half a mind to get the old 50 mil out, actually. The XF35. In fact, I'm going to do that before this light goes. fading to deep oranges and reds. That's one of the things with sunsets here in Australia, they go pretty fucking quickly. You can't hang about. So you'll have to tell me, did I have managed to evoke a mood? <laughs> You've been watching the photos as I've been putting them on the screen as I've been editing this video. Did they evoke a mood in you? Anyway, the light is fading rapidly. We're about uh, 20 minutes past sunset now. So I'm going to walk back to the car. If any photo opportunities present themselves along the way, I will of course stop and get the camera out and take some photos. But I think we caught the best of it there. I'm happy with uh, the photos I think I've captured. And we'll see what they all look like when I get back home and uh, wang them into Lightroom.